Have you ever wondered how much meat you're supposed to eat on a carnivore, hypercarnivore, ketovore, or animal-based diet? How much meat do you start off with? How much do you buy? What meat should I focus on? Does it change over time? In this video, I wanna show you how I started, how I initially determined how much to eat each day, and how I decided the quantity of meat to buy when at the store based on my own daily protein requirements. However, my ultimate goal was to retrain my own body and my hormones to signal myself to eat intuitively and to never have to worry about tracking calories in relation to my body composition and health goals. Does that mean I don't track anything to lose fat and gain muscle? Yes! I want to preface that this is how I started and how I eat. It could be quite different for you based on where you're starting from, what nutrients and healing your body requires, and what your health and fitness goals are. The second preface before I get started is that I was on a ketogenic diet for over a year prior to switching to primarily carnivore. I had already cut out all grains and starches, so that may have made my transition a little bit easier. Eat meat until you're full. Keep eating meat until meat doesn't taste good anymore. This is great advice from carnivore experts in the space, and I think this is the ultimate goal. But what does this mean when you're standing at the meat department at Costco, battling for precious grocery cart space with all the other people looking to save a few bucks? The other common guidance you normally hear is eat two pounds of meat. Two pounds of what meat? How can that be the same for everyone? Is that right? Well, sort of. So let's get into this. I think it is quite accepted in the nutrition space that one gram of protein per one pound of body weight per day is a good starting point for the average person who just wants to be fit and healthy. The absolute minimum requirement you normally hear is one gram per kilogram of body weight. However, that is usually mentioned as the absolute floor. Obviously, this ratio might be much higher depending on whether you wanna look like Thor or Schwarzenegger. I've heard this ratio from others in the carnivore space as a good guideline, so I jumped right in and started eating. Now, it is in my own nature to be a little bit more analytical, so I decided to initially look into the amount I was eating and track it on a daily basis just to make sure I was getting enough nutrition when starting. So as a baseline or starting point, I started with one gram of protein per one pound of my ideal body weight. For example, if you're 170 pounds, but your goal is 150 pounds, then aim to have 150 grams of protein per day. That is a one gram per one pound ratio. A general rule that I use to quickly calculate how much meat to buy the store based on the amount of protein I require is this. One pound of meat equals 16 ounces, which equals 453 grams. On average, one pound of meat has 100 grams of protein. Therefore, one pound of meat is 100 grams of protein, one and a half pounds of meat is 150 grams of protein, and two pounds of meat has 200 grams of protein, and so on. Just multiply the weight in raw pounds of meat you're eating by 100 to come up with a quick estimate of the protein you're eating as well. Obviously, this can skew depending on the fattiness of the meat you're buying, but I've noticed on my diet so far and looking at the macros of the types of meats that I've been eating, over this time, it has tended to average out this way. Alternatively, you can track everything you eat in one of those apps, but who wants to do that? This doesn't need to be an exact science. I never wanted to spend the time tracking everything you eat, although that can help some people. But in my opinion, it takes way too much mental energy that can be used elsewhere, and I don't think people have fun doing that. If your goal is to gain weight or add muscle mass, then increase your ratio above one to one. The idea is to preserve as much lean muscle mass as possible, all while losing body fat at the same time. Ketogenic and carnivore diets have been shown to preserve muscle mass, all while reducing body fat and body fat percentage. It has also been shown in studies that the growth hormone released during fasting can also preserve muscle mass, but that is another video. Let me know in the comments below if you want to hear more about this topic. One thing to note about this method of eating is that you have to select cuts of protein and meat that have the most fat on the animal. Think chicken thighs, not chicken breast. Think ribeye and 80-20, not sirloin and 93-7. Choose your goal weight and eat that amount of protein in grams from fatty cuts of meat. You need that fat for energy, nutrition, and proper hormone maintenance. Once you've determined your total meat and protein intake for the day, split your total meat intake into one to three meals, depending if you want to fast, how long you can fast, and how much you can eat in one sitting. Do whatever feels comfortable and do whatever you've already been doing. Fasting can have many benefits, but as I was just starting off, I was only concerned with the transition to carnivore, and I wasn't focusing on long fasts, especially since I wasn't accustomed to it yet. Be sure to check out our videos on the most optimal cuts of fatty meat. We'll leave a link in description down below. One thing I tried to do was not to snack. If I felt the need to snack, I increased the amount of fat in each meal so that I was satisfied longer and that I could go longer between each meal before eating. I chose fats from animal products like butter, cheese, tallow, or I added items like bacon and pork rinds to the end of my meal. Alternatively, you can just choose fattier cuts of meat for your meals. If you've calculated the amount of protein required, but you're still a little bit confused about how much to eat, you can use your BMR or basal metabolic rate as a guide to determine the estimate of the total amount of calories you need. However, in the long term, and due to any nutritional deficiencies you may have, or the energy expenditure from the exercise that you do, you should just eat until you're full, and use the BMR calculator as an estimate to only determine the initial volumes of food you require on this diet. 
If you're trying to lose weight, do not decrease your total calories too quickly from your current BMR, and always make sure you're eating enough protein. Gradually do this decrease in calories over a period of three to four weeks, but always make sure you're full and satiated. The goal is not to starve yourself. Another tip, if you're switching to carnivore for the first time, do not cut out all the food you were originally eating all at once. Slowly remove it from your diet over a period of six to eight weeks. For example, you could reduce the amount of carbs and plant food from your diet by 15 to 25% each week and replace it with additional fat and protein. After you've determined your initial protein requirements, have become adapted to a fully carnivore diet, and have eaten this way for a few weeks, adjust your volume of food based on satiety and eat intuitively. By eating this way long term, your own hormones and hunger signals will determine the correct volumes of food you require. We are not that smart. Our body and millions of years of evolution are much smarter than we could ever hope to be. So there are many BMR calculators on the internet. I'll leave a link for one down below. This is how I used a BMR calculator to initially start out. Like I said earlier, I don't count calories, but when I started carnivore, I used this just to make sure that I was on the right track and getting enough nutrition. So this is how you do it. Go into the BMR calculator, put in your height, your weight, your age, and the level of exercise or activity you have on a daily basis. For example, if your goal weight is 150 pounds, you're 5'7", and you exercise one to three times a week, your BMR is about 2,200 calories. In relation to actual food and to satisfy those energy requirements, you would need about one and a half pounds of 80, 20 ground beef, three ounces of cheddar cheese, and four slices of bacon. That would be a total of 150 grams of protein, 176 grams of fat, and if you care, 2200 calories. This one day of eating would be an example of a cost-effective way of meeting your daily nutritional requirements. Another example that's a little bit pricier, under the same requirements, so 150 pounds, five, seven, and you exercise one to three times a week, would be one and a half pounds of ribeye steak and four tablespoons of butter. That would be a total of 168 grams of protein and 176 grams of fat for about 2,200 calories as well. These are just general examples of the types of food you can eat in a day and what you can buy at the grocery store. However, your personal requirements may change depending on any health issues you may have. I don't think BMR is a sustainable way of eating long-term because it is affected by a lot of different factors. For example, if you cut your calories too low, your BMR will slow down. Also, your hormones can have effect on your BMR as well. So cautiously use BMR as just a starting point and just to initially determine how much food you need or just go intuitively from the start. The examples I gave are just generalities on what you can buy at the store and how much you can eat on a daily basis. This can obviously change as well, depending on your own personal requirements. So if you're new to the carnivore diet or still learning, I hope showing my experience will help you determine what you need to buy at the store and what you need to eat on a daily basis. If you liked my video today, please leave me a like, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be the first to know when we release a new video or recipe. Leave me a comment below on where you're at on your carnivore or keto diet and what tips you may have to someone starting out. Until next time.